Hello people, and welcome back to part 13 of Novaria, our city's skyline snow build. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. And thank you for all the support on Sunday's stream. Uh, we did some nice jobs, we came through and reworked the transport plaza that sits within the University of Technology. Uh, separating out the train lines, so we added in one of the new content creator stations. And then relocated this one, so the bypass lines actually function as intended now. The trains will bypass the station. As they come through, hopefully we can catch a train. There we go. See the cargo train just passes straight through now. Very nice. And also introduced another one of these underground, uh, open top metro content creator stations. And I'm a huge fan of all these new stations from Bad Peanut. If you don't have this content creator pack, there are links down below to Instant Gaming. Definitely worth picking up, but certainly one of the better ones. And we also introduced another stop into Minor Square, again upgrading the Underground Metro uh, due to a comment we had last episode saying that this one within the town centre uh, really should be an Underground Metro one. So, done this as well. And then also some light apart life detailing, as always, around the base of the Metro station, just to help detail the front of the monorail line. And, uh, yeah, had a wonderful time. Always enjoy our Sunday live streams, and if you haven't checked them out, they are available to watch back in their entirety on the channel, they are always uploaded as videos, so if you want to go and check them out, they're good background noise while you're playing, pick up some detailing tips and ideas as well. And if you can uh, join us live, then they are always at 7pm UK on Sunday. However, today's episode, we are going to be looking at a forestry build. Uh, it's been a long time since we've done forestry. Um, we've already got some heavy industrial builds in Novaria, of course we have uh, the casino oil fields over here. Uh, and the uh, Wayne Goodbar Hydroponics Facility. Uh, so we're going to take off another industry today. Um, we were going to do ore mine, but because we did a big ore pit in five builders recently, uh, you know, we'll, we'll save this for another day. Maybe in a few weeks' time. Um, but we've got a big chunk of industrial demand. Uh, so we're going to get started with a nice highway side forestry. Of course, forestry, one of the prettiest industries to build. I'll probably say the prettiest. Uh, but either way, let's get started on a forestry build, shall we? So the first thing I want to do here is have a look at our terrain. And because we're heading towards this mountain, the ground is gradually sloping up now. And I definitely want this to be elevated uh, up and against the highway. Uh, however, I also want a highway uh, entrance point. So why don't we save ourselves three tiles between the highway? Actually, maybe let's go for... Let's go for a touch deeper than that instead, actually. So we'll just use these roads as our boundary. So I guess that's like five or six tiles, isn't it? All right. And then let's come into our level terrain. We'll go into a high intensity. And then how about we just pick out this layer here? How is this going to look? I think that's a fairly sensible height for the forest industry, right? I think it is. So let's run with this then. Let's go on to our, our larger brush and bring this through. Of course, we are probably going to run out of soil so i'll go and steal some from the local mountains let's keep bringing this down so we have that border when we know when to uh, stop terraforming okay bring this through but yeah the layers of height within the snow map are always uh appreciated as well it's nice to see a different color than other than white in the in the ground isn't it having this little bit of brown here is that uh, it's certainly going to help us we're also going to get a nice little transition or contrast rather uh, in height from that uh, last episode's transport hub too, looking out over to his forestry build here today. That should be quite nice. Okay, so I'll go and steal some more soil, uh, level this out to what we want it to be, and then we can start looking at an internal road network for this too. Okay, so let's bring up our arterial by another 10 tiles. And then we'll grab ourselves perhaps a small roundabout. Of course, we can fan off some different builds of this now. We can uh, perhaps feed a road this arterial, which we did actually want to bring back through here, so let's bring this in. Let's actually turn this into a national road now. Uh, let's go for a two-way, two-lane highway. Okay, and we'll of course build some other little smaller towns off this, and we'll definitely start to move more rurally as we uh, head towards this mountain peak here, or mountain ridge rather. Uh, perhaps some inspiration to be taken from the Rockies for a little mountain town to be sat at the foot of this mountain. We'll see. We will definitely start moving rurally uh, between now and episode 20, I guess. Got some nice country builds on the go. 
Okay, so we will uh, move on to industrial road here. That's always a nice aesthetic. And let's paint out our industrial area. And then bring it roughly to where we want it. We'll of course expand it as the industry area grows. And of course because we are building with forestry. And we do actually need trees. So we'll just put down a blanket layer. And then we can refine once we know where our resource buildings are going to go. Okay, so let's bring these down here. Now I definitely want the forestry main building to be sat. It's kind of the the entrance point into the industrial area today. So let's start throwing out some supporting roads using our small industry. And then we'll grab forestry building. Here we go, forestry main building. Fantastic news. That's going to give us the sawmill, the small tree plantation, and a small log, log yard, which isn't that impressive at the minute. But uh, once we get into some of the other stuff, really the, the great detail and asset within this is the sapling fields. And um, it's these ones over here. Okay, so it looks like the asset's slightly different in the snow, but we have sapling greenhouses. Which I'm sure will look great up against this ridge, but we don't hit them until, is it level 4? Level 2, okay. Let's work with this idea then. So we'll clear out these trees at the front, because we know we're not going to have any production buildings here. And then what we'll do is we'll start introducing a one-way system. That'd be okay. I still have some assets turned on from five builders, it looks like. <laughs> I definitely need to turn those off. Please excuse me. So we'll just start out really basic here, just to get ourselves going. Nothing too serious. We'll throw down a couple of tree plantations. And let's have a look at what the, the best looking tree within the snow is going to be. So we have alder, beech, and conifer. I think conifers are going to be the best repeated part of the snow, isn't it? We're already using a lot of conifers uh, within the area for detailing purposes, so I think we'll run with the conifer aesthetic. Okay. So we'll have a nice batch of um, small conifer plantations behind our main building. Okay, and then we'll trim off a couple of layers of trees here. And then let's start introducing some vanilla dirt path into our forest industry as well. Let's also bring it up and behind. So this was something I came up with in Palaban, was using dirt paths to decorate a forest industry. Um, I wasn't really expecting them to get that much use. But they actually end up did getting a fair bit of use, so you can't really complain at that. Okay, and then we'll have the one-way system uh, feed back down into this road as well. At least for a tiny bit. Let's double check how deep These small plantations are, so we'll do 270. But we're two tiles deep here, so we'll change that down to 210. And then what this will do is accommodate another small tree plantation directly behind this little pathway. And then this will get us started and moving through those levels. And then we can, of course, just bring through the road network here, flip the one-way system back around. And then we should start seeing some production start to happen. Uh, so in terms of the production buildings, we obviously want to get a sawmill down. Because uh, this is going to start producing uh, planed timber. <laughs> I think I'm finally pronouncing that right. Uh, on the fourth city on this channel. Uh, so we got some plain timber and I've been pronouncing it planned for the last god knows how many years. Okay, uh, and we'll keep our one-way system flowing. Um, as the industry areas get significantly bigger, the, the traffic obviously scales with it. Uh, and if you don't factor in one-way systems early, it can get really messy uh, quite quickly. So let's have a look at our sawmill. And uh, obviously discuss asset orientation as well. Okay. I do like this back end here. I'm a fan of the rear, where we have the little... It's like a sawdust pipe. I don't know. Who knows? So with that in mind, let's bring a dirt road in and bring it straight behind the asset, and then we can just flip this onto its other side, and this will give us a slightly nicer drive by. We're also getting some little layers here as well, where there we are respecting the topography <laughs> for once. 
Okay, so let's run with that idea then. And then we can of course discuss some detailing palettes for the episode. Let's bring in some forest defense. So how about we have this run in a couple of boxes. Let's actually shift this one uh, over by one like that and then come up by 80. That'll give us three tiles in the middle where we can run a pathway through. And then we can complement with perhaps some smaller green trees. Just something like that. So you know, we're getting a little bit of jank here, but I'm, I'm happy because we're you know we're moving up onto higher terrain. I think there's a little bit of repeated sawmill spice will uh will serve as well here. Okay. We'll also give these guys a log yard as well, um, so they can store uh, their product here. And again, we'll have a look at the asset and decide. Uh, which way we want it orientated. So the nice thing about these assets is they actually change as they fill up, uh, kind of cut logs appear within their yard. So we definitely want this orientated um, in a particular manner. Let's have a little look. So it's going to be one side of our forest area. I already decorated up as we come in using assets and fences and whatnot. We're really starting to see a, a vibe develop here, okay? So I'll get these guys hooked in uh, with power and water uh, and then we can start seeing some people flow and moving through with the forestry levels. So the forest area is going now. These guys are going to start slowly being delivered with resources and we'll see our log yard fill up here slowly. Which will be nice. However, I've also placed in the solar power plant um, just so these guys have some kind of power but I think we can... I think we can integrate this into the build. Um, especially if we have this angle of the asset facing out onto the main road. I think we can get away with this. Quite a modern looking asset and actually would have worked really nicely uh, within the hydroponics build. Kind of fits in with the vertical farm here. See it over in the distance. Two assets that complement each other quite nicely. But I think we can get it into our forestry. And we do of course have the uh, geothermal, but I use this all the time for forestry. And the solar is a little bit obnoxious <laughs> with this enormous tower. So why don't we try using something different for once? Let's go with the solar plant instead. So we'll take it away temporarily. And then let's terraform a platform out for it. Because I do want this to be sat on another elevation. Um, against this main road here. We also want to factor in our cycle highways into the forestry as well which will probably be the public transport uh, for the build today don't think we're going to bring trams or anything over definitely won't have metro in the forestry area okay so again so we want a road to run this side of the asset don't we and then this will allow us to have this side of the power station facing out here. I think it certainly has some forestry vibes to it. It's got <laughs> it's got trees and bushes and uh, a couple of little logs here. I think we can get away with it. I think we can. So let's leave it in and then adjust the road network to hug the asset entirely because it's got a different colour texture and we want to make sure that we factor that in. And then whilst our forestry area is on the way uh, we can bring our cycle highway around. Uh, let's make sure we stick in increments of 10 here. Okay, and then we'll... Got a nice little curvature on here. And then we can just get a nice straight run down. Along the side. And then come down into the forestry area. So this will be a nice way for workers to get back and forth. And then what we can also do is um, we'll give these guys a crossing point here, which is parallel with that one. Yes, it is. And then we can allow this cycle highway uh, to continue to flow elsewhere into the city. And uh, just continue to make Novaria as cyclable as possible. Very nice. So we'll see how many workers pick this up. If it turns out to be pointless, then we'll probably just kill the connection. But it'll be interesting to see how many people uh, choose to cycle uh, into the forest area here. There's no... Oh yes, yes there is. I was about to say there's no one using the National Road, but here we go. Someone's coming down it. 
livestock truck. So he is working for the farm and he's going to be using this as a highway connection now, I guess, then. Yeah, so this is going to give more highway access for uh, the farm industry down the road as well. That would be good. And then we'll also uh, provide uh, highway access at this point as well. So let's come into our terrain and then we'll give a little bit of slope tool. Um, let's click here. And then just generate a little, a little slope down this way, right? Let's come onto a smaller brush size while we're working with something a little finickier. And then we'll go for road guideline. And we want to knock this off just a touch more again. Just refining the terraforming we've done. There we go. That'll be fine. I'm looking to here. I don't think that slope's too severe, is it? It's nice and gradual. Okay. Very nice. And then we can have this run. We can probably turn this into high speed road as well. And then we can give it a very brief highway connection. Uh, for the time being, you are not sinking through. You're not producing power. Because you have water, of course. Oh really? <laughs> that one that one tile shut down the forestry area? Okay, there we go. Everyone's fine now. Wonderful. So that's going to be great. Let's see what we need. Uh, so we have the capacity uh, for 250 workers. We only need 150. And of course the resources will slowly tick over as we, uh, as we let time pass here. So I will uh, let things grow. And uh, we'll be back at level 2. And here we are already with a biomass pellet plant, the furniture factory, Soda storage, worker barracks, and a small sapling greenhouse at level 2. So let's have a discussion first of all about this small sapling greenhouse, shall we? Uh, let's snap to the road guideline of this little highway access road. And first of all, take a look at the asset itself and see what we think of it. Let's go into our forestry. And then we'll place this down. Okay, so they're almost like little tents. Little snow-covered tents, aren't they? Okay, and how are we looking from the highway here? Yeah, I think I like that. I think I'm a fan. I think we will eventually replace them for large. Maybe once we hit level 4. Just so we're not used as many of them and they're a little bit longer. But for right now, I think I'm fairly happy with that. There we go. And then we can back these assets onto each other, which again is almost like you know, doubling the asset up. Let's take away these trees on the front now too. I'm guessing these don't light up at night, right? Oh, they do. They do. Oh, no, they don't. <laughs> no, it's just the street lights. Okay, that's fine though. Because it's like a little illumination, isn't it? Kind of just noticed that the the cord lights on a one-way street are different to those on a two-way never noticed that before okay that'll give us some nice contrast though with um the nighttime shots i think but nice forestry area starting to develop here as well and let's have a look what else we've unlocked uh, so we now have the bar mass pellet plant which will help us produce paper and again i think there's a nice spot for this to sit Elevated alongside the solar power plant. So let's come in with some terraforming and continue to introduce these layers up and against our highway exit here. Okay, so if this road's in the way, that's fine. We'll take it away for the time being and then bring it out from here instead. Because I definitely want the biomass plant to sit here. Let's drop that in. Yeah, so some nice tiered forestry action starting to happen now. I think I'm fairly happy with that. And let's definitely uh, reinstate our little access road here too. Now we've got 
our general shape in, we know where we're terraforming against. So those initial boundary roads that we set aren't particularly useful to us anymore. Let's tear out some, some trees. And then we'll do little curves of five. Come straight for ten. And again, we probably want this to have its own dedicated storage. And we have unlocked sword or storage at the same time here as well. So let's also come back into our forest brush and remove these trees. Now we know we're not going to place any production buildings here. And then let's have a little look at asset orientation for the sword or storage. And see how we want this to, uh, to lie within the area. So these will just help keep our biomass pellet plant fed once it stocks up. Uh, so let's go for... Oh, can we squeeze two of these in? Yes we can. I'm guessing we won't be deep enough here for back to back sawdust action will we? Could get one on the side though. Maybe we go for a triplet of sawdust storage. Here alright. Could be overkill, but I don't think it is. I think that's okay. And then where we have some dead space um, between uh, these sort of storage buildings, let's bring in perhaps a dirt pathway. Okay, and start bordering this up now with some path action. And then we can expand these assets, uh, coming just to our road length tool, or just the angle tool rather. And then almost like boxing in these little corners of path spice. There's some tufty overgrowth. You know, the industry's DLC made such a huge difference to how we not only make money with the industries, but decorate with them as well. And we will use some of the vanilla uh, forestry stuff as well to decorate out. So just a little expansion of the sword of stories there using the same fencing and some vanilla pathway is going to just help kill a little bit of that dead space I think isn't it. Okay, so we'll get some traffic backing up here as these guys fill up but once they're full and um, this will calm down a little bit. So what we're up to, so again we're way over capacity uh, for workers. Need 350, of course we're not making a profit at the minute but um. Once we hit level 5 and everything's stabilised and we have everything how we want it, uh, this will calm down uh, a little bit. Okay, so we also have the worker barracks, um, which is a nice looking asset. It actually works really well in a, a nature reserve, this asset. It's got some very strong log cabin vibes to it. An example of where you can use it away from the industry area if you wanted to. Uh, but we certainly won't have it there. Yeah, we did also not the factory too, didn't we? The furniture one. So which does want paper and plain timber. And again, if we place this in. Wood vision. Now do we want this to sit up here on the hillside? It's, it's definitely a nice asset to have alongside the highway, I think, isn't it? So I think we will. I think we will have it here. Okay. I feel like I also want a connection here as well. And um, just for the the paper to get out of the biomass plant a little easier rather than having to circle all the way back around. Okay, these junctions are a little close together, but it's straight onto the highway, so it shouldn't get too bad. Usually this is a bad thing to do, but it's only a highway slip, it shouldn't be that busy. Possibly a one-way road. So they can only exit and they have to come back down this road to get in. I think that's what we'll do. It's usually a good idea to keep the one-way systems flowing. And we'll have all this as one-way system too. Yeah. That's going to be a little bit nicer, I think, isn't it? 
Okay, I'm happy with that. Um, let's terraform a touch of land out for our furniture factory to lie on. Alright. And then we'll give this some warehouses as well. Uh, let's bring road length back on too. Provide a nice, perfect box for this to sit on. And then we can have a look at some warehouse assets. So we could accompany it with a medium, but I think probably two smalls is going to be nice to have them sat here. Just make sure that we're still maintaining a nice aesthetic from our highway as well. 240 out this way as well. And then we can squeeze them in back to back. Uh, and then you want to store paper and you want to store plain timber. And this will make sure that our factory remains stocked. Okay, so a little bit of back-to-back uh, -back warehouse action uh, up next to the furniture factory. And that'll be quite nice. Uh, now it's a case of waiting for level 3. Our industrial demand is slowly falling. Um, <laughs> after two every industrial builds and an office park, we're finally fulfilling it. And uh, yeah, now hang around, uh, wait for us to hit 350 workers. Oh, there are people using the cycle highway as well, which is good. Yeah, so he's going to work at the small warehouse. That's good then. That he's cycling that way. Yeah, fair people using it actually. Good. Okay. Alright, cool. People are cycling here, which is exactly what we want to see. So yep, yeah, I will hang around for level 3. And then we'll see what new assets we get to play with. So we're at level 3. And we're going to get a printing press, a medium tree plantation, and a large log yard. So level 3 is not tremendously exciting. Um, the printing press, of course, is a unique factory. And it wants plastics. Um, no, it doesn't. This is the toy factory. <laughs> Ignore me. Um, it does want plastics. Actually. It wants paper and plastics uh, for the printing press. Which I didn't think we used in Palavan, did we? Uh, the printing press. How much plastic are we producing? Well, I wonder. 20 tonnes to be exact. Okay. So we can definitely factor this in if we want. Let's have a look at the asset first of all. So we could get two unique factories in here today. Make that press. I don't think this is the asset to sit within a forestry area. It's a little too... It would make quite a nice small town asset, I think. I think it would, wouldn't it? Maybe what we can do with this, um, either during one of our rural episodes or perhaps in Sunday's live stream, um, is within this space develop a, a small forestry town that accompanies the industry area and include the printing press almost as like a, a key town centre building for that forestry town. This would also, just going off on a tangent here, <laughs> um, pair quite nicely with a public library as well. Have a look at our factory here as well. So I've upped the production rate to 150%. Um, it's staying constantly stocked uh, with stuff that's in here. Making, you know, it's just, you can see them running resources back in two. It's all very nice. It's exactly what we want to happen. Uh, it's never running out of resources. And uh, the factory is going to continue to make us money. Uh, so we did unlock the medium uh, tree plantation, which is, again, just uh, a larger version of these. Um, we, we could switch these out for this if we wanted to. And um, it'll just mean less cars coming out of six assets rather than just use two. But I don't think that's what we'll do. Um, let's begin to uh, perhaps introduce a few tree plantations on this side of the forestry area so let's place one in here and then we'll go for another one there and then we can now start to look at polishing off the road network it's gonna have these nice big central blocks of conifer through the middle of the forest industry which i don't mind i think we'll run with this idea let's get conifer in here as well of course continue to um not demolish <laughs> our tree plantations. 
Now let's have a little discussion about how we're going to destroy things that we immediately place. Uh, and then let's maybe switch the uh, path orientation here as well. Excuse me if you just heard Coco shake off in the background. She has just woken up from her nap. It's about that time, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, it's Coco nap time. Okay, so people are incredibly unhappy across the city here. Oh, I've not given these guys water, have I? Please accept my apologies. There we go. Um, I have just added in a small little population centre um, opposite our transport hub here um, as we develop some uh, riverfront commercial to sit over here just to bring in a few more workers into the area. Okay, so we are actually uh, below capacity uh, for the next level at the minute, so we'll definitely need to introduce something to support that. How about we go for... What is it that isn't getting stocked very well here? Paper. So we could do with another biomass plant. At least temporarily until we get port mill. And then perhaps a small log yard here as well. To keep the biomass pellet plant fed. Let's run with that idea for right now. These additions might not be final. But we'll see. I think it's a nice compliment, especially down at the street level to the factory here, when we're getting some internal internal forestry street spice too. So I can continue to flesh out these these little areas here. Okay. So what we will do at this point as well is also paint over a regular vanilla district over the industry area. And then we're going to give this the vanilla forestry specialization and then come in with some regular vanilla zoning and then just start to introduce the occasional block here and there of industrial zoning and then what we'll see here is just these little assets begin to appear okay and they're just going to work really nicely integrated into all the industry's DLC stuff. And then we'll just see these little blemishes of detail uh, start to appear around the forestry area. So it's always a nice idea, at least from a decorating perspective, to integrate uh, vanilla forestry uh, with industry's DLC forestry. So if that's something that appeals to you, then uh, it's something you can do. Uh, but either way, that should give us the capacity for the workers we need. We yeah, have 617, uh, we need 550. Uh, so we'll just wait for this to slowly tick up and then we will come back and check out level four where we will grab the engineered wood plant and probably something else the wood chip storage as well and then we also get the maintenance building and we should get our sapling greenhouse as well here the larger one so we can replace these ones here too and here we are finally at level four I've included a little small town here just to get the population in, uh, to get the workers in. Uh, but this is definitely not uh, permanent. We'll rework this little town here on the right, which I'll look at in a minute. But this gives us the engineered wood plant, uh, the soft paper factory, which is an enormous factory. We'll definitely use this in the cargo harbour. And this won't be over here, it's too big. A wood chip storage, the forestry maintenance building, and the large tree sapling greenhouse, which I'm very keen to use. Let's have a look at the size of this thing first of all. Yeah, so it's pretty much the depth of two of them. So let's remove our small ones. And then we can replace this one. I'm guessing it's just going to be the same, is it? Yes. <laughs> it is literally just two small ones glued together, isn't it? Okay, that's fine though. We can might as well just save the upkeep and the traffic as well. And just replace them in. Okay, I think I'm happy with these. These little kind of cliffside sapling greenhouses. Some people cycling here as well. Good to see people cycling around the city rather than driving. Yeah, it's nice. Okay, I've also thrown in um, another sawmill as well and a couple more medium tree plantations. Uh, just so we can get the workers in really. Uh, nothing too serious and the uh, workers barracks which isn't going to stay here. 
Alright, we will find a place for this. Somewhere. So we don't have the engineered wood plant. Let's have a little look at this asset. So very similar uh, to our sawmills. And it does produce plain timber as well. So it's, uh, I guess it's just a slightly more modern looking sawmill, isn't it? So how about we take out this one instead? And then bring this one over here. Let's take out this road for right now. We have to bear in mind that the arterial here is going to continue to flow in this direction. So let's make sure we factor that in. And then continue to decorate up against this side. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I hate it. I think it's alright. So let's reintroduce our one-way road network. Bring this down as well. And then is there a possibility for some side-on engineered wood plant spice maybe? We can have a, a brief discussion about it. So we could drop one in here. This is going to be right on the roadside. I think this is going to be the better side to sit on the road, isn't it? So let's bring that dirt road out from this one instead. And then we can bring that down there like that. And then what we can do is continue to extend the asset like we have been doing all episode. By bringing the forestry fence out of it, which will give it that, that border that we like. Okay, so we'll now get some very close fence against road action here. Okay. Now we're a little too close there, but that's fine. We can detail this up with uh, pathways and whatnot, trees. All our usual favourite techniques. Okay, so the road network here is becoming a little messier now. Let's have a look what else we've got to play with to tidy this up. Could also play with wood chip storage here too. Which would be a nice break from that fence and it'll keep our production building supplied as well, of course. Functional as well as aesthetically pleasing. So let's bring our one way systems back in. And this needs to be dirt road, really. Again, where we have these spaces, this is uh, more opportunities to come in with uh, some of that regular zoned vanilla forestry stuff. Make sure that our district covers the area. We probably won't hit level 5, I think, today. I remember Palavin's forestry. It was over two episodes because they do take a little while to hit level 5, the forestry, for some reason. But if anyone else has had that experience, you know, we hit level 5 with the farm uh, relatively quickly as we did with the oil industry as well but forestry just seems to seems to take a little while however guys that does feel like a good place for a detailing time lapse uh, we do need another town to sit alongside this thing which is a separate build uh, within itself and what we'll do is during sunday's live stream at 7 p.m uk uh, we will come through and rip all of this out this was just to get its level four uh, and form an accompanying forestry town around the printing press asset uh, to help bring this up to level 5, of course, and um, yeah, develop a nice little uh, forestry town build up alongside the highway to complement these residences over here. Uh, but otherwise, we can detail up now. We're going to bring a full forestry fence around the perimeter of this thing, uh, detail our roundabout, of course, alongside some more dead spaces here, and continue to zone out with uh, vanilla industry stuff and uh, bring a little more of a harsh forest border to this place as well and I start to detail our highway which I think we're just going for a zoo fence mostly over here isn't it yeah a little bit of zoo fence between the highway just acts as a kind of crash barrier if you like yeah but actually um let me know guys would you prefer the forestry town to be a episode or do it on Sunday's stream um, I'm happy to do either but uh if you want an episode then you'll get an extra episode on the very this week as well and we can work on our forestry town so, either way, let me know in the comments, but let's detail what we've got for now, and we'll be right back.
Okay guys, that is going to do it for today. I want to thank you all so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, my like below is always appreciated. Equally as much, if you haven't enjoyed it, please feel free to leave a dislike as well. Really happy with this forestry build and this layer of height up against the highway. It really brings it to life a little bit, especially now we have one of the unique factories set up there as well. Let Do let me know in the comments if you prefer the forestry town to be on Sunday's stream or a separate episode this week. I'm happy to do either one, whichever you guys prefer. Uh, but either way, we definitely need a town to accompany this thing to get it to hit level 5. I remember in Palavan, the forestry area. It was split over two different sides of the highway and over two different episodes because they do take a while to get up to level 5, um, which at least in my experience, I've never had that with the farm, the ore, or the oil. It's just the forestry that seems to take a little bit longer. Uh, but either way, please let me know if you've had that experience as well down below. I'll be interested to know. But lots of nice forestry vibes, tons of fencing and pathways, and vanilla zoning really helps bring these places to life. So hang around for the rest of the outro Taj and check this place out at night time. I'm sure it'll look wonderful up against the highway. And hang around to the end of the video to listen to our Patreon questions, of course. And if you would like to support the channel, there are various ways to do so down below. But otherwise, I will shut up, and I will leave it there. I want to thank you all so much for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day. asks how much planning do you put into your videos do you just play around with assets or do you really take up pen and paper is it different for different series like spice my city compared to 5b1c on varia 
Um, yeah, it is different, but different series. Uh, the modular builds take considerably more planning than the main Let's Plays like Navaria and Palavan did. Um, depending on the build, I'll usually jump into a Discord stream and test out something that I'm planning to build in these cities. Most of the time, they're kind of improvised on the go. Modular builds, because the measurements are kind of measured out exactly so people can recreate the builds in their own cities, which is the point of that series. Um, yeah, modular builds are planned out on pen and paper. Main series are kind of winged <laughs> with a little bit of planning beforehand. I like it to be as organic as possible rather than scripted. I think that comes across in the cities as well. And 5B1C, again, depends on the build. Stuff like the ore mine took a lot of planning, whereas the commercial waterfront was fairly simple. So yeah, it varies from series to series. Thank you so much again to all the patrons. Really appreciate it. And you guys make a huge difference to my life. And if you'd like to become a patron, there are links down in the description below. Well, thank you all so much again, and I'll speak to you all soon.